Uh, what's up, Bethel? And to all of our special guests, um, blessings to you on the day. We're following the orders of our governor and our health department, and we are staying in the house. As you know, we've entered into an exciting preaching and teaching series entitled Stay in the House. And today is our virtual Wednesday edition. I want to teach on My House is Covered. My House is Covered. Uh, grab your iPads, grab your iPhone, get on your computer, uh, gather the family around. Uh, it's Wednesday Believer's Day Bible study, and it's time for us to dig deep into the Word of God today and hear what God has to say to the people of God. Turn with me, if you will, to Exodus chapter 12. I'm going to be reading from the Message Bible, uh, chapter 12, verses 12 and 13. I will go through the land of Egypt on this night and strike down every firstborn in the land of Egypt, whether human or animal, and bring judgment on all the gods of Egypt. I am God. Verse 12, the blood will serve as a sign on the houses where you live. When I see the blood, I will pass over you. No disaster will touch you when I strike the land of Egypt. In our text today, God is giving Moses specific instructions for the children of Israel. The entire community of Israelites uh, came together to participate in this Passover meal. And to participate in this Passover meal, in order for their homes to be covered and the deaf angel to pass over their houses, they had to follow the instructions God gave to Moses and Aaron. God gave them a strategy. And to be successful, they had to follow the instructions given to them. These instructions were specific. They were not arbitrary. The age of the animal, the type of animal, a lamb or a goat, the, the daytime, the day and time they were to start the process, uh, how it would be cooked, the herbs and the spices that they would use, they were told where to place the blood. They didn't have a choice. They were told to place the blood on the lintels of the doorposts of their house. They couldn't place the blood on the steps, or on the porch, or on the window. Uh, they were told where to place the blood. They were told when to eat, and they were told to be dressed while they ate. And all of us know that in life, success to a large extent is based upon our willingness to follow instructions from a child, from an infant, following instructions. We are taught to follow instructions. Let me ask you, how much further along in life would you be if you had paid closer attention to the instructions that were given to you? Every aspect of life, uh, to the real extent, is evaluated on how well we follow instructions. You know how it goes. Uh, we're uh, putting something together, uh, we take it out of the box, we look at the picture, and we start assembling it together, and then once we think we're finished, we look down, and there are a couple of screws and bolts and parts that are missing, and we go back and get the box and say, well, what happened? And we go pull up the piece of paper, and it has on this piece of paper, uh, it says, before assembly, read the instructions. And we have an instruction manual for life. And for the believer, our instruction manual is the Word of God. It is the Bible. Uh, God gives us instructions of how to live life through His Word. Israel, as a community, in order for them to be successful, they had to follow these specific instructions. And as a church, as an individual, as a believer, in order for us to navigate through life, we have to learn to follow instructions. You know, uh, uh, as a, an adult, many times when God tells us something, we think he's trying to keep something from us. Uh, we tell our children, uh, be home by a certain time, or don't do this, uh, don't do that. And they believe that what well, my parents are trying to keep me, keep some fun from me or, 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 or trying to hold something back. But many times in life, it's for our own good. Uh, being able to follow instruction. Israel was told what to do and to eat the Passover meal and stay in the house. COVID-19 
coronavirus uh, has caused us to hit a pause um, uh, for a moment to reevaluate some things in our life. And this new social norm of staying inside the house, sheltering in place, um, you know, life has changed. Uh, and this new uh, social norm of having to stay in the house and only leave out for things that are important, uh, even for me as a pastor, uh, I think maybe Monday of this week, I finally got my sea legs back. And I'm like, man, this thing is real. Uh, this is no joke. People are getting sick and people are dying. Uh, now, personally, I don't know of anyone uh, who's died, but just keep hearing the news reports and reading and looking. People are dying from this thing, and this is serious, uh, of following instructions. And I believe that in life you ought to never waste a good storm, uh, that if God allowed this to come, then I need to ask myself, what can I learn from this? How can I grow from it? How can this help mature me? Uh, because God allowed this to happen. He may have not sent it. In fact, I don't, I don't know who sent it, but I do know that it, it came and God allowed it. Nothing can happen without God's permission. And for some reason, he allowed this thing to happen all across the world. So on today in our Bible study, can we just dig a little deeper into the text uh, and look at what the text says? Uh, God is coming to judge Egypt and the false gods they serve. Um, God gives instructions uh, so the Israelites would not be harmed if they followed the instructions. Uh, let's look at two points today in this text. Uh, number one is that God's protection must be aligned to his principles. Uh, God has principles for us to follow. And if we're going to be under God's protection, then we have to align ourselves with his principles. He was specific uh, in his instructions if they were to be passed over. Uh, if their firstborn was not to die, they needed to follow the instructions. And the standard for every believer's life is God. Uh, God gives us instructions to follow, and these instructions are for our benefit, for us to navigate through life successfully. Um, and in essence, uh, the children of Israel followed the instructions, and they were practicing faith, because the instructions were given, and by faith, um, they followed what they were told. Uh, they heard the instructions, they put faith into action, and did what they're told. Uh, faith is not faith unless you put your faith into action. Uh, this coronavirus has come, uh, and many of us, many of us are concerned and we're nervous and we're worried, and all those things are rightfully so. But as believers, we have to practice faith uh, and believe and trust God and follow what the doctors and our health department and what they told us to do. Um, we have to follow that. The children of Israel, they acted in faith. They killed the animal, and they physically applied the blood to their houses. Let me ask you today, uh, have you applied the blood to your house spiritually? Have you applied the blood to your house? When you look at this text, in their day, they had to apply physical blood on their doorposts. Uh, today, we apply it to our hearts. Have you applied the blood to your heart? Uh, has the blood washed all of your sins away? And then if it has, then we don't walk in fear. We walk in faith. And let me say to somebody today who's doubting and somebody who's worried on today um, uh, that it is your obedience. Amen. Obe obedience is better than sacrifice. It is your obedience to God, amen, that guides your life and protects you. Uh, they did what they were instructed to do. They applied the blood to their doorposts. And, and many of us, many of us have been coming to church and Sunday school and Bible study, participating in ministries on Wednesdays and Sundays and, and, and throughout the week. Uh, and now the reality of life has hit uh, that we came together at 1972 North Frail Oaks uh, in this place of worship. And now, what do you do? 
we understand that worship is a matter of the heart. And somebody said, I might have 99 and a half problems, but my worship is for real. That even though you can gather at this house to worship, then worship should not be restricted to just Sunday morning or Wednesday and when we gather. For the believer, worship is a matter of what you should be doing every day, all day. We worship the Lord. Um, um, the Israelites, they were given instructions. Um, they could have talked about it. They could have thought about it. They could have sung about it. But it wasn't until they put it in to practice. Uh, they took the instructions and they applied the instructions. And subsequently, when the deaf angel came, their homes were passed over. Uh, God's protection must be aligned to his principles. Uh, if you want God's protection, then you have to align yourself to what God says. And, and, and let me stick a pin here, uh, because there is this notion today about faith, that, that, that because you have faith, um, that you won't contract the coronavirus. Uh, um, I wish that uh, was true. Um, uh, if, if that's your theology, uh, listen to me well today. If your theology is that just because you have faith, uh, and I believe in faith. Uh, I'm a faith person. I believe in faith. I believe in what the Word of God says. But if you believe that just because you have faith that the coronavirus won't touch you, then let me ask you a question. Are you saying that the folk who are sick right now with it, uh, the folk who've died, are you saying that none of those people were believers? As believers, we live in a fallen world. We live in a world of sin. Uh, and just because we are believers and we have faith just does not mean that sickness and bad things won't happen to us. Okay, all right, you, you're looking at me now. All right, how many of you are saved and have faith but have high blood pressure? How many of you are saved and have faith and you have diabetes? Grandma was saved and she died of cancer. Uh, life happens even for the believers. Uh, and yes, faith is fundamental. Faith is essential. Amen. But just because you have faith won't keep you from contracting this virus. If you don't follow the instructions that have been given, um, and what are they? Uh, wash your hands, wash your hands frequently, uh, social distancing, um, remaining um, uh, an appropriate distance away from people, um, that if you call for a sneeze, uh, cover, cover your mouth. Uh, if you're sick, uh, stay on the inside, stay home. Um, um, they've given us these rules to follow. And if you decide not to follow those rules and not stay in the house, shelter in, and out in the streets doing what you want to do. And if you contract this virus, then don't blame the disease, blame your disobedience. Israel had an option. It had an option to follow instructions or to be disobedient. And that community as a whole followed instruction. And because the entire community of Israelites followed the instructions, they were spared when the deaf angel passed by. Let me ask you, how would you feel um, if you didn't follow the instructions that the doctors uh, and the scientists have given to us um, and you call somebody else to contract of this virus and they died. How would you feel? Uh, people are dying of this and yet, and yet we're not afraid because as believers uh, we know if this earthly house or this tabernacle be dissolved we have another building uh, not made with hands. But listen, I'm a pastor and but I'm not rushing to get to my new building. Uh, I'm following instructions. Uh, I'm doing what they told uh, me to do, um, and, and, and following instructions is for my protection. It's for your protection. It's for the protection of the community. As a pastor, as a believer, God's protection 
must be aligned to his principles. You've got to align your life to what God says. And then number two, uh, instruction is protection. Uh, instruction is protection. Let me ask you in this text. Uh, have you ever thought about the fact uh, that the deaf angel is coming uh, and is coming to kill the firstborn uh, of humans and animals? Have you ever thought about the fact that God is coming to kill somebody? God is coming to kill the firstborn? Uh, have you ever asked yourself, well, well, if God is a loving God, God is a merciful God, uh, why is God coming to kill anybody? Now, now stay with me. Have you ever thought about it? You read this text. Uh, the Bible says that uh, Israel is putting blood on the doorpost. Uh, and on that night, the deaf angel is coming, and the deaf angel is going to kill the firstborn of the land, human and animal. Why is God killing people? Hmm. That's why we're in Bible study. Uh, hit me up on Facebook uh, and talk to me today. Why is God killing people? Uh, what? God is a loving God, but in the text it says he is going to kill on that night. God understands and knows Israel is his chosen people. Uh, and that the lineage of Jesus uh, would come through Abraham. Uh, and God is a protector. Uh, God is not going to allow anything uh, to happen to his seed. Uh, when I look back over my life, uh, man, and I always tell the uh, Bethel Church, if God could just send you a DVD, of all of the things he's kept from happening to you, of all the things he has protected you from. Now you know what you've been through, the heartache, the ups and the downs, but how about that stuff that he protected you from that you didn't even know? Uh, the old folks said it was from danger seen and unseen. God is protecting his seed. He understands that Jesus has to come on the scene, and if Jesus doesn't come on the scene, then that would be no salvation for our sins. And right now, Egypt is blocking that promise from coming, amen, and doing harm to his people, and God intercedes. And you know the rest of the story. God is a protector. Instructions is for your protection. Solomon tells us to be wise, my son, and and, and follow instructions. Uh, bind them to your neck. Uh, uh, and I think we, we're living in a time now where, where, where many of us uh, are simply refusing to obey instructions. I was watching uh, television the other night and watched all those young people uh, at the beach. Uh, and in fact, one young fellow even said on camera, you know, I'm going to have my fun and uh, what if I contract corona? Uh, and, I, and, and when I heard it, I'm like, man. Uh, but in my spirit, I'm like, well, if you do, are you saved? Because if you're not saved and you contract corona and you die, okay, uh, then where will you spend eternity at? Um, uh, when you watch people suffering with this disease and how to tax your lungs and you're not able to breathe, uh, but as a people of God, I believe, we need to follow all of the instructions that they're giving us uh, and to pray and to be careful. Uh, uh, instruction, instructions, instructions are for our protection. Uh, we've been told by the scientists and doctors of what to do. Uh, Heaven's Health Department has spoken to us uh, and, and told us uh, not to assemble in groups of more than 10 uh, and maintain your social distance when you're in the group. Uh, and I pray and hope that all the members of the Bethel Church uh, that you are practicing uh, what you have been told. And so if you don't practice this and you get the disease, don't blame the disease. Blame the disobedience. Israel chose to be obedient. And because they were, the deaf angel passed over their homes. Don't you run out your seat when I tell you this. God told Israel, stay in the house. Put the blood on the doorpost and stay in the house. 
I wonder what would have happened if they had left out the house. That night, they were occupied with following the instructions of what God had given to them, roasting the lamb or roasting the goat and eating the Passover meal dressed with their clothes on, ready to go. Bethel, you cannot let this coronavirus throw off your worship. Many of you have called the office and have talked to uh, some of you. You've expressed uh, your angst for missing uh, the worship on Sunday mornings. Listen, I miss you too. I miss the hugs. I miss the fellowship. I miss the warm embrace of seeing all of your faces here. But don't you let not coming to 1972 North Fair Oaks, uh, this physical place where we worship at, throw your worship off. Because you are the real church. The church dwells on the inside of you. If you've applied the blood to your heart and the Holy Ghost resides on the inside of you, you are the church. And wherever you worship at, it's worship. At your house, in your car, on your job, you can worship. Worship is not restricted to Sunday morning here in the physical place of where we worship. And this uh, this um, uh, coronavirus has really caused me to take a deeper look at my own faith and about our practices on Sunday morning. Because sometimes Sunday morning gets rote. That we come in, we do the same routine, we show up, and it's as though we're coming to give God his hour or his hour and a half. And now that you can't come to this physical place of worship, are you worshiping at home? Have you set aside time to worship with your children? Now, you know, uh, I've asked you this past year, set your clocks for 12 noon, pray for the church. I've asked you when you get up in the morning, before you get your cup of coffee, before you get dressed, before you brush your teeth, before you hit the floor, uh, to give God the first 15, 20 minutes of your morning. And your worship, your worship now. Now that you're home, you're home with your spouse, home with your children, you told me, Pastor, I'm going crazy uh, in the house, not knowing what to do. But can I suggest to you, turn up your worship. Set aside some time to worship with your children, your own private worship time. Put it into practice every day. Uh, who's going to sing? Who's going to pray? Who's going to read the Bible? Who's going to teach the Bible study lesson? And I guarantee you, if you've applied the blood to your house, and you are worshiping, and it's going to bring down your stress level. Now, I know, I know parents, I hear you now. You know, you're telling me, I listen, Pastor, you don't understand. I love being a parent two hours a night and on the weekends, but now I've got a parent 10, 12 hours a day. Well, okay, it is what it is. But begin your day with worship. Cause your family to enter into worship and to praise and thank God that you have a family, uh, that you have a place to live, that you have a house, that you are not homeless. Look at all the ways God has blessed you. Nobody in your house has this virus that you know of, that you all are well. Nobody's in the hospital. For the worshiper, there are tons of things that you could thank God for. As the world's going crazy and stocking up and buying ammo and, and guns and toilet paper and all of those things, that we're going to store up our worship. Because for us, our worship is real. Not just on Sunday mornings when we came to worship, but our worship is real now that we can't come on Sunday morning. What would it look like for your pastor to be violating what the governor has said, what the health department has said, uh, and God forbid if someone came here and you left and contracted the virus and someone in your home died or was sick, what would I say to you? What could I say to you? Obedience is better than sacrifice. Obedience is better than sacrifice. And you need to make sure that you are practicing faith and not foolishness. As believers, because we are saved, does not immune us from having bad things happen to us. That's why we apply the blood to our house, 
And when it happens, when life happens, listen, listen, I've lived long enough to know life will happen. Life will hit you. And when life hits you, you can come through with still standing simply because you've applied the blood to your life. It may throw you. Uh, you may lose your balance for a moment. But for most of us, uh, give us a few days and we spring back up again and we praise and thank God for bringing us through it. Because right now, we're right now, God has taken us through this storm. We're not going to stay in this storm forever. He's going to bring us through it. And I decree and declare that this new normal, uh, I told our team the other night on our conference call, that there are things that are happening now, that once this is over, that life for us as believers, there will be things that's going to change, but life is going to be changed in some ways that we'll never go back to how we were a month ago. There will be some things that will be permanently different. Even as pastor, look at me tonight. We're broadcasting tonight, not in the sanctuary. That's new for us. Uh, uh, this virus is causing us to think outside of the box, to do things differently. And as believers, by faith, I believe God is blessing us through this, and he's going to continue to lead and to guide us. So don't you be dismayed, because you can gather here in the sanctuary. Where you're at is your sanctuary, because you are the church. The church lives on the inside of you, and you've got to express your faith, not just when we come together as a corporate body, but when you alone by yourself in your house. Are you a worshiper? Stay connected. Stay in the house. Not just in your physical house, but stay connected to his presence. Because we can gather on Sunday and Wednesday and throughout the week, you need to work on staying connected to his presence. He said he would never leave you nor forsake you, but don't you leave him. Stay connected to his presence. Stay connected to your spiritual house. Text me. Go on Facebook. Put a comment on. Go on the website. Let's stay connected to your spiritual house. Stay connected. Stay faithful. Stay prayerful. Because the enemy wants you to believe that none of what we're doing is working, that your prayers are not working, you can't gather in the church, and all of that. you got to come against that and know that what you are doing is working, and God is listening, and he's watching out for you. Let me talk to my youth, to my young adults, to my singles, my marriage couples, and my seasoned saints. Stay in the house. Why? Because you're covered. You're covered by his blood. You've applied the blood to your heart spiritually. And I know you're getting restless. I know day by day. But you got to take it day by day. And trust God. Follow the instructions. Don't allow the enemy to cause you to slip up. And that one time you slip up may cause you to contract Corona, and then bring it back to your household. And then you'll be calling me, Pastor, uh, so-and-so is sick. I need you to pray for us. And yes, I will. But don't let it be because of your disobedience. If it comes, let it come just because it came. Stay in the house. Stay connected. Stay prayerful. Hit me up on Facebook. Um, Give me your comments. Tell me what you think about the broadcast, about these series of messages, and about staying in the house. Pastor wants to hear from you. To all of those tonight who've heard this word, look at me, look at me. Israel, in captivity, practiced the Passover. And what they were doing by sacrificing the lamb or the goat and placing the blood on their doorposts was simply a foreshadowing of what was to come. You know where I'm going, don't you? Uh, that it would be Jesus uh, who would come as the precious lamb of God whose blood would 
take away the sins of the world. It would be Jesus who hung on Calvary and his blood would drip down into the dust of the ground in which he made man from. But it was the shedding of blood that gives us the remission of sin. In fact, the Bible says without the shedding of blood, there can be no remission for sin. Jesus shed his blood that you and I could have eternal life. And if you're listening to this broadcast today, and you've never knowingly invited the Lord into your life, you can accept him now as Lord and Savior. Whosoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. All you have to do is right now tell him, Lord, here I am. In whatever situation you're in, Lord, here am I. Forgive me of my sins. Come into my heart and save me right now. And the word of God we preach and the word of God we believe says if you do that, then you're saved. But then you might be listening to us and not have salvation. Text us. Counselors are here. Uh, we'll further share with you, explain to you, go in detail with you of what you need to know. Uh, and I know you say, well, Pastor, I did that, but nothing happened. Yes, it did. Simply because you couldn't see it, maybe not feel it. But the Bible says that the moment you utter those words, that Holy Spirit now sealed your salvation. And now you are a believer. You're saved. You are a child of God. But Pastor, I'm messing up. All of us mess up. Saved folk mess up. Saved folk sin. Just because you're saved don't mean you won't sin. We have an advocate with the Father whose name is Jesus, who forgives us of our sins. Call us. The number's on the screen. Text us right now. Text me your name and your email address. I promise you, counselors will call you back. Uh, text to be saved. Text to join. Uh, looking forward to hearing from you. Um, God bless you. Tell you what, uh, let's close out with prayer on the night. Um, Eternal Father, how we bless you and we thank you for this Wednesday Believer's Day Bible study. I ask your blessings on the Bethel Church, its members. I pray for our nation. I pray for the world. I pray you give leaders wisdom in making right decisions. I pray as we stay in the house that you would bless marriages, that you would bless children. God calls us to begin to look at our obedience to you and the instructions you've given to us simply for us to follow. We bless you. We thank you for another broadcast. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs>